Okay, good morning, uh, everyone. Trust that you're doing well. All good? Fine. So let's pray and uh, we'll continue with the next chapter in Acts. Can one of us from the online batch pray? Either uh, Shiv Kumar or uh, Sister Chaya. Shall I pray, Pastor? Yes, yes, Sister. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for this morning peace and this time of learning about your word, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for Pastor and all the students online and in person, Lord. Bless each one of with your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, Jesus, Father. Open our minds, O oh Lord, Jesus, Father. Open our hearts, O oh Lord, Jesus, Father, so we can carve it in our heart, O oh Lord, Jesus, Father, and help us to practice in our life, O oh Lord. Yes, Father, yes, Jesus, we thank you and we praise you, Father. Bless each one of us, O oh Lord. I commit hold, hold this one into your mighty hand, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sorry, Pastor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Chaya. Uh, we will now proceed to Acts 15. We have completed till 14. So what did we see in Acts 13 and 14? Missionary. Correct. First missionary journey of uh, Paul. Who were the people who were together? Paul, Paul Barnabas. Barnabas. Yeah, just for some time. So where did he return? Perga. Correct. Acts chapter 13. Very good. Uh, and what are the major places visited in the missionary journey? Of Antioch of Pisidia, Iconium, Lystra, then Derby. Derby. Very short stay in Derby. Came back to Lystra uh, and uh, back to Iconium, Antioch, and then they went back by sea and came where? Finally. Antioch of Syria. Okay. So because that was their base church and they reported all these things to the, uh, the home church or the mother church, whatever we want to call. Uh, and everyone <coughs> glorified God and they continued to stay there for a long time. Now we go to Acts 15. <coughs> so could somebody read for us the initial few scriptures, verse 1 to verse 5. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the customs of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no smell, dissension, and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about the question. So they're being sent on their way by the church. They passed through Phoenicia and uh, Samaria dis describing the conversation of the Gentiles and they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders and they reported all things that God had done with them. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up saying it is necessary to circumcise them, to command them to keep the law of Moses. Okay. So there is an issue on which people are disagreeing among the believing community. That's what we are seeing here. What does that matter? Circumcision. Circumcision of whom? Gentile believers. Because uh, remember we talked about missions. We said that um, initially it was all about the, the disciples of Jesus, then the believers of Jerusalem. Then slowly uh, Philip went to Samaria. So missions started happening, you know, across the, the territory. Right? Region, different region, somebody went and did ministry. Then in Acts chapter 10, we saw different community. We now suddenly had Gentiles. Peter goes, preaches to Cornelius' household, Gentiles come to the faith. So what we can understand is after Acts 10, 
many gentiles started coming to christ but don't know from where this false teaching started what is that false teaching that gentiles should also be circumcised see verse 1 it says unless you are circumcised according to the custom of moses you cannot be saved but what did peter preach believe repent okay and then be baptized this is what peter preached earlier so he was preaching and the believers apostles were preaching about uh, salvation by faith right but suddenly there is this new teaching salvation through circumcision now what is this it is not it is not according to the scriptures so when certain people from judea came to antioch and they started telling you unless you are circumcised according to the custom of moses you cannot be saved to the gentiles barnabas and paul got very angry they were like what is this teaching from where are you bringing this false teaching so they <clears throat> in fact argued they argued it says dissension not a small dissension meaning it must have been a pretty serious discussion that they had saying uh, how can you change the requirements for salvation itself salvation is by faith it's not by these acts someone is preaching tradition here they are saying circumcision you have to be circumcised you have to do this you have to do that you know only if you do all these things you are saved so thank god for you know teachers like paul and barnabas who stuck to the scriptures and they uh, argued with them and then they decided it is better for them to go to jerusalem to talk about this question we should not leave it like this why because it seems like it was probably widespread that's why some people it does not even say who they were some people meaning the the teaching has reached lot of people any one set of people came and they are saying regarding this circumcision of gentiles and it's not fair right to put this additional burden on them because gentiles were not circumcised by tradition but they are putting the jewish tradition on the gentiles so paul and barnabas said okay fine let's just go to jerusalem we'll discuss this matter so they go and they pass through certain regions and they finally come to jerusalem they are received by the church and the apostles and they are reporting all the things that god has done so ultimately you know jerusalem church is also one of those uh, like you know the main churches where all the leaders are so they're going there and they're sharing about the missionary journey different things and how many believers are growing but when they take this matter even to jerusalem there are some pharisees or you know jews very traditional jews who say no 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 uh, it is necessary according to the law of moses for the gentiles to be circumcised how can we accept them without circumcision so uh the church is encountering a problem at this point and what is that problem that problem is this matter of the tradition of judaism being imposed on gentiles another community um and uh, not according to what had been taught by uh, you know jesus or by the apostles so what to do now because something some new uh, concept has come in so that's what we are going to see so in acts chapter 15 we are going to see the discussion about this matter of circumcision of gentiles and in jerusalem now that paul and barnabas are in jerusalem a meeting will take place which is known as the jerusalem council so they are all going to discuss together the leaders are going to discuss together to make a decision now what to do so many gentiles are accepting christ uh so what was actually happening in the church so this is roughly ad 49 first missionary journey what is the duration first missionary journey two years so when to when
46 to 48. Just two years before, no. So 46 to 48 is first missionary journey. 49 is Jerusalem Council. Okay, so remember it like that. To understand the situation better, uh, if we also read a passage from Galatians, Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 14, we will find out that uh, when Peter came to Antioch, it, apparently Peter came to Antioch when uh, Paul and Barnabas had completed their first missionary journey and spent some time in Antioch. So at that time, Paul uh, rebuked him. Why? Because Peter was the one who preached to the G Gentiles. But apparently what he also started doing is when Jews were watching, he would not eat with the Gentiles. When Jews were not watching, he would eat with the Gentiles. So he was doing all these things. So uh, Paul rebukes him and says, hey, how can you do this? You know, so what is going on in the church is, see, basically they're having adjustment problems. Now there's a new community that has joined. And uh, traditionally, the Jews and the Gentiles have a lot of differences. Like even within the temple, they'll not uh, allow the Gentiles beyond, you know, the, the outer portion. So now think about this. Uh, where worship is going on, Gentiles are also coming inside. Jews are having a problem now. How can you allow Jews, Jews sitting next to the Gentile? So uh, when the church is growing and when there are new communities joining, these kind of issues can happen. There is a problem of adjusting, accepting one another. Maybe because of that, some learned Pharisees, Jews came up with this new rule that no, you can't be saved. Uh, only if you're circumcised like us, you can be saved. Okay, uh, and it was as if the leaders of the church, see even Peter, he's so scared of the Jews that he doesn't want to have a meal with the Gentile, lest somebody sees him. What if somebody will see him with a Gentile? But actually, Peter doesn't mind. Why? Because he has seen what God has done for Cornelius and the, the family. But in front of people, Peter has another stand. So all are struggling to adjust with what God is doing. They are trying to uh, accept the Gentiles, but they are struggling. And somewhere in the midst of that, a Jewish custom is imposed on the Gentiles. So there are two problems. One is, of course, a cultural thing where Jews are not ready to accept the Gentiles. When the church is growing, all these things can happen. Okay, so cultural problem. But the bigger issue here is theological problem. What is a theological problem? They are saying without circumcision, according to the tradition of Moses, you can't be saved. Cultural problem, they made it a theological problem now. Now Paul, Paul and Barnabas cannot keep quiet. They are saying, come on, this is too much. How can we... Change the theology. Jesus died. Isn't believing in him, repenting of our sins, not good enough to be saved? So we can't let it be like this. If we leave it like this, what will happen? They'll keep preaching it. And they'll tell all the Gentiles, you know, that this is what it is. So it's interfering with the truth of scripture. That's why they got so angry that they had not a small dissension with these men from Judea and they decided we'll just go. We'll go, we'll meet James. You know, like you say, you want to go to the Supreme Court. It's like that. We'll go straight over there, meet all the apostles, meet James and ask them, how can you leave this uh, theological issue? We have to come to a conclusion and then we will make it clear to all the people because this wrong teaching is spreading everywhere. Fine. So now we understood the context. What is happening? Now that they've come to Jerusalem, what is going to happen? Let's look at that. Okay. So um, let us read. Let's start with verse 6 to 7. So the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputed, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while 
ago god chose among us that why my mouth the gentile should hear the word of the gospel and believe okay sure so they have come and you can imagine a meeting taking place okay the apostles are there paul barnabas and all and it also says elders are there so again church government do you remember we are also seeing the evolution of church government initially there were only few names peter john james then we had like you know some volunteers came into the church uh, then slowly we have additional uh, apostles like paul barnabas first it was only 12 12 apostles had all the focus now additional people they are not yet called apostles but later we will see that paul and barnabas are also called apostles right so new apostles uh, we have elders it says so before this you don't see elders decision is not being made only by the apostles they are discussing with elders also okay come group discussion let us decide together so this is all a good pattern we are seeing a new pattern of uh, govern governance or church government we call it uh, emerging among the believers so they come then peter still seems to have a lot of uh, um, honor so he's the first one to speak up but was it a cool and a what can you say like a calm discussion no it was not it says see was seven there had been much dispute argument quarreling okay so even among the elders and apostles they are not able to come to a conclusion why because there are people who understand the gentiles but then there are the very traditional kind of jewish believers also they are not giving up so now what to do how to convince all these people so peter stands up and peter starts to talk about how he went and he preached to the gentiles and how god acknowledged in verse 8 he says so god who knows the heart acknowledged them by giving them the holy spirit just as he did to us so he is saying look god is accepting the gentiles okay verse 9 and made no distinction between us and them purifying their hearts by faith so uh, he is also saying that when god is accepting them god is not showing any difference between us and them then why are we doing this why are we putting he says see in verse 10 he says why do you test god by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear so he saying there is a tradition that we are imposing on the gentiles so let's not do that because that's not really from the lord and verse 11 but we believe that through the grace of the lord jesus christ we shall be saved in the same manner as they so he is quite clear he is clear about the uh, theology part of it as well he is saying let's not impose the tradition don't you know that it is by grace that we are all saved then where is the question of circumcision thank god peter was also convicted just the way paul and barnabas were standing uh, for the truth peter stood up for the truth and he also shared his experience now it says the multitude kept silent and they listened to barnabas and paul declaring how many miracles and wonders god had worked through them among the gentiles fine so two things have happened what are they peter's testimony paul and barnabas's testimony so what does this prove peter's testimony was holy spirit was poured out on the gentiles paul and barnabas they talked about all the miracles so what does this prove about god and god's uh, love for the gentiles yeah there is no difference there is no partiality there is no gradation all are same all are equal all are accepted by god it's very clear so when testimonies are shared it's powerful they share the testimony it's powerful 
But let's see what James does. James, the brother of Jesus, is the leader of the church at this point. So the final call is in James's hands. After listening to the testimonies, James did what a good leader should do. And you know what? He quoted scripture. Okay. So he's making a decision, but he's making a decision not just on the basis of testimonies, but on the basis of scripture. So what does James do? James quotes a passage from the book of Amos. Okay, a prophecy of Amos. Amos chapter 9, he quotes a, prof a prophecy. And uh, it is in verse 16 and 17. Can somebody quickly read it for us? Verse 16. After this, I will return and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. Yes. I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by name, says the Lord, says, says the Lord who does all these things. Okay, so, see, this is what a good leader should do. Whatever decisions we make align to the scriptures, not just align to, you know, what people are saying, leaders are saying. Uh, now, James could have said that, yeah, Peter is right. Paul and Barnabas are also right. So, let's not, let's not tell that the Gentiles must uh, be circumcised. And the council would have listened to him. But being a good leader is knowing what God says beyond the testimonies. So what is James doing? He's saying, you know what? Yeah, Peter, Paul and Barnabas are giving us their experience that God is working among the Gentiles. But don't you remember, Amos said that God will bring the Gentiles to him when the tabernacle of David will be rebuilt. And then what did God say? God said, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, meaning there are Gentiles who will believe. God is accepting them. God has already prophesied it. So why are we stopping what God is doing? Right? Let us accept the Gentiles and let's not impose right, uh, 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 any additional thing on them. So from verse 19, he says that, okay, let's not impose anything additional on them, but we will give them certain guidelines, not theology, but guidelines to this community. So could somebody read from uh, verse 19 to 21? And so my judgment is that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write and tell them to abstain from eating food offered to idols, from sexual immorality, from eating the meat of strangled animals, and from consuming blood. From for these laws of Moses have been preached in Jewish synagogues in every city on every Sabbath of for many generations. Mm. So finally, James makes a decision, but he makes a decision after a good discussion. Uh, you know, he doesn't behave like a dictator. They have a good discussion. Then he listens to the testimonies, but a good leader will make a decision based on scripture. So he quotes the scripture and says, yeah, truly Gentiles are coming to God. So here is what we are going to say. We give them few rules. What are those rules? Abstain from things polluted by idols. So uh, Gentiles, because maybe traditionally the Gentiles had that problem. They were eating food which was, uh, you know, given to idols. So they gave them the rules and said, don't do that. Because if they do that, how can the Jews eat with them? They can't. So abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled and from blood. So they just gave certain guidelines so that they stop their wrong practices of worship and they can be more acceptable to the Jews. So just some guidelines, some cultural guidelines also, like how, you know, we could say that, um, uh, suppose, I don't know what we can, 
traditionally is there anything like this any such example we can go to where we can say just for the acceptance we tell them okay uh ha huh, okay let me put it this way a simple thing so now if we go to any of the uh, beach towns in the world and all there are certain churches where uh, you know people will go in their shorts and uh, you know they'll go on their bikes and that's church also because they're worshiping god and all but if they dress like that in let's say our city it may not be acceptable so we just give guidelines we don't say oh you will not be saved uh, we are not saying anything theological like that but we are just giving them a guideline and saying see uh, because the place where we are it's a little bit more formal please do not do x y and z just follow these guidelines so something like that is what they did to the gentiles they just gave them some guidelines and uh, said that it's not that god will not you know accept you and all it's just a difference uh, that we have but here the matter is somewhat more serious because they are addressing not just uh, about what to wear or uh, you know how to speak it is also it's also got to do with the worship of the gentiles which they practiced earlier so you know there's a mention of uh, idols and sexual immorality so there are certain things that don't glorify god so these are serious matters as far as uh, the decision of the jerusalem council is concerned okay so now the decision is made what to do next there was a written decree which was made so because the leaders have decided but how will the people know unless it is communicated so if it was our times we would have sent an email or they would have made an announcement uh, right on the internet and everyone knows but those days they could not have done that so they wrote the decree and a letter was sent paul and barnabas took that letter back to antioch and that letter gave clear instructions okay so uh how about we read it verse 24 to 29 it's quite clear verse uh, 24 since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words unsettling your soul saying you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we give no such commandment it seemed good to us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men to you with our beloved barnabas and paul men who have risked their lives for the name of our lord jesus christ we have we have therefore sent judas and silas who will also report the same things by word of mouth for it seemed to be good to the holy spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than this necessary things that you abstain from things offered to idols from blood from things strangled and from sexual immorality if you keep yourself from these you will do well okay thank you nina quite a uh, uh, long letter there but it's very clear if we see from verse 23 it says this is written by the elders of the church it is written to the brethren uh, who are gentiles in the regions of antioch syria and cilicia and then it goes on to explain a few things what are those few things uh, it says that you have heard people tell you that you must be circumcised but we never said anything like that clarification very clear isn't it so the gentiles uh, would not have felt that is this the real teaching is is this what jerusalem recommends they would not have any con- had any confusion they would have been clear because the elders are saying we never said you should be circumcised they clarified then they are saying it seemed good to the holy spirit and to us verse 28 so notice we said the decision making process was good because they all discussed but here what what are the leaders saying so it was not just our decision the holy spirit is involved so we have to remember this see it's not just about what feels good to us 
as far as the church is concerned is god happy with our decision that's how all decisions should be made so uh, james was quite clear and the leaders were very clear that the decision which was made was not just agreeable to them but also to god so they say look based on god and us we feel there are only these guidelines which we want to give you you know abstain from uh, things that are offered to idols sexual immorality uh, and then of course things that are strangled and blood so follow these things but we are quite clear that it's not about salvation through circumcision okay so this is the jerusalem council now the clear cut letter has gone out to all the believers so nobody can deceive them with lies right so let me pause here any thoughts or questions about the jerusalem council or anything that you learned online students any learning anything particular you noticed pastor can i share yes please uh, jackin yeah so something that stood out to me was paul uh, speaking out boldly and taking up a stand for the lord when he spoke to peter that what he was not doing right so that is something that before god like what pleases to god is what he thinks of us and not we should not be afraid of men and even if they are like leaders we should tell the truth gently so that is something that paul uh, from the life of paul this i did not observe so much but as you were sharing today the holy spirit was uh, putting in my heart it's all that matters is what the holy spirit is telling each of us whether it is personal obedience or you know something we are part of a group or as we are leading a study or anything we should watch what god is speaking to us and from the scriptures should match always with the scriptures and we should stand for the truth yeah sure uh, jack and thank you for uh, sharing your observation uh, from the way, from paul's life and uh, how he took things up nina you wanted to say something uh, i felt like even the jerusalem council all the leaders were in one accord even though this is a very sensitive matter and it's so difficult for them to accept it but because of the holy spirit yeah. they were like really clear about that one accord yes yeah correct uh, isn't it the jews found it difficult to accept but because holy spirit was agreeing they accepted it that's i i never thought of that actually yeah only today right like how uh, paul and barnabas took the stand for the right yes. doctrine right like yeah. they did not like okay since even they are the apostle they were doing the work they did not thought like okay they are the mother church they are the people who are teaching let's not go different but even though i don't know whether they have that much right or not but still they went and they have stand for the truth yeah that's really great you you're right Uh, they didn't keep quiet because it was interfering with the theology now <laughs> how can they keep quiet that's great yeah, uh, that's what uh, what prince of us said mm. at how uh, like whatever they want like they were preaching before false teaching but even though they stood up and they said like this is wrong and they corrected them yes. so that's really amazing that uh, when sometimes come like we see the so i think we have to tell like yeah we have to correct sometimes it's needed yeah. for that true imagine if they didn't yeah so it would have spread everywhere the wrong teaching right. and over over time affected so many gentiles would have been affected by it but they took a stand mm. but 
All right. So uh, let's move on then. So they've come back now with the letter to Antioch of Syria and they deliver it to the Gentiles. The matter is resolved. Everything is clarified. But this time when they come back to uh, Antioch, they bring with them two prophets, Judas and Silas. Okay, they were with, with the church and what happened, they kind of encouraged the church with prophecies and strengthened the believers. So there is, um, there is ministry, not just teaching ministry, but you could say prophecy as well that is happening in the church of Antioch. So the church of Antioch is uh, a beautiful picture of a thriving church. People are grow. People are being added. Um, Paul and Barnabas are teaching for long periods of time. There are prophets. The work of the Holy Spirit is manifesting in that church, and they are also sending out people. So it, it's a wonderful church. This time around, what happened is uh, after their stay in Antioch, they finally decide that okay, let's continue. We came from a missionary journey. Let's go to the next missionary journey so right now uh, paul and barnabas uh, they decide to step out right so while they are there in antioch uh, paul and barnabas are uh, continuing their work of teaching and preaching just before they they go uh, but also silas decides to stay back so these are all the people in uh, Antioch right now. Preparation for the next missionary journey is starting and they have to go. Now is when they will have a problem regarding the teams. Who are the people to take with us in the missionary journey? So from verse 36, let's uh, go ahead and read it. So we will read from 36 to 41 and briefly discuss. So one person can read it out. 36 to 41. Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us know, let us now go back to and visit our brethren in every city where we had preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Now Barnabas was determined to talk with them. John called Mark, but Paul insisted that they should not take them, not take with them. The one who had departed from them in from Philia and had no gone with them to the work. Then the con contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to. Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed, being commanded by the brethren to the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthen, strengthening the churches. Okay. So the second missionary journey has to start. And they are making decisions about uh, how exactly to go about this. And at that time, um, in Paul's mind, he wants to go back to the same places to go see how these people are doing. Sorry. And to strengthen them, right? To preach the word, to equip them and all of that. All that's clear. But as far as the people are concerned, Barnabas had made up his mind about John Mark and said that he wants to take John Mark along. Now, this is the matter that Paul did not like at all. As we have mentioned already, this is the person who left Perga of Pamphylia. He left there. And why do you think uh, Paul was upset? We could have take, they could have taken John Mark, no? Yeah, so what? So what if he left? Yes, so uh, see here we also see that when there are 
two people involved in anything <laughs> there is always like personality clash and you know there are differences so observing the personality of barnabas what do you think about barnabas in terms of the person that he was encourager very generous very uh, very accepting even when the apostles were not ready to take paul he only went and uh, spoke up for paul in antioch he only went and brought paul so he's that accommodating kind maybe you know he quickly forgives people and then he just uh, brings them but what about paul paul's personality very strong very strict <laughs> very serious very passionate so for paul it was like this person no way you know he will not survive first mission like chota missionary journey only he could not handle uh, how will he handle okay for the uh, you know non indians chota means small <laughs> so i'm just telling them they'll, they'll try to look for it the word is not there over here so he felt that this person has already disproved himself he doesn't have any credibility we can't take such a person with us it's a it's a burden or rather you know whatever else paul thought but barnabas it says he has already determined so there are two strong personalities and what does it say verse 39 contention became so sharp not able to agree how can this happen both are men of god not able to agree it happened <laughs> serious issue and it was so serious they parted from one another it says they said okay fine i will do this only other person saying i will do this only <laughs> so can't agree can't go together Barnabas is okay. Bye. I am taking John Mark and going. <laughs> okay. And Paul is like, okay, if you go, I have Silas. Remember, Silas stayed back. Silas, pack your bags. Let's go. So Paul and Silas are the other team, and they both decide to go. For Barnabas, Cyprus is his hometown, so he already knows Cyprus, uh, and maybe it will be a little bit easier. So he takes. Uh, john and goes to cyprus and uh, he continues the work there but paul decides that he will go back to the same areas where they ministered so firstly they are going through the region of syria and cilicia so earlier they went through cyprus that's why they had to go down a uh, travel by sea and come back to the land but now he's just going through land only directly to those places he can still go right to derby and lystra iconium so he's going upward north north uh, of uh, uh, syria and he's moving on to the cilicia region okay so it seems little bit sad but what to do they both split and they had two separate teams but god's work is going on so we can be happy about that and it says that the believers they commended them to the grace of god so the believers say okay fine you know as long as you're doing god's ministry may god bless you may he make you fruitful go ahead you know we will be praying for you and they sent both these teams out so what about this person john mark i already shared in the earlier class but just would like to uh, remind us once again that this john mark is the son of mary in whose house the prayer was held in acts 12 uh, and uh, he obviously he spoiled his reputation with paul <laughs> in the beginning he would not have known that oh this is paul the apostle anyway it happened and uh, he lost his chance to travel the second missionary journey with paul but later we are told that he became strong in the ministry work he did a good work uh, and in fact you know Paul mentions him positively so there are some references Colossians 4:10 Philemon 1:24 2 Timothy 4:11 where he says I need Mark send Mark so can you imagine the same Paul who said I don't want Mark <laughs> is now saying I want Mark so he proved himself that's the point 
Mark was a sincere minister of God. And over time, Paul realized, Paul realized that, hey, we don't know why he did like that in the beginning, but uh, he has been committed to the ministry and faithful for so many years. So no problem. Let's put those old things behind us. And he st later on, he started saying, I want Mark for the work of the ministry. Send him. So he, he uh, proved himself as a mature uh, and a faithful minister of God. And we also know that, uh, you know, for Peter, for uh, Mark was uh, so good in the ministry that, in fact, Apostle Peter, in uh, 1 Peter 5.13, he refers to Mark as a son. So faithful, faithful person. That's, that's how we understand the good relationship he carried with uh, Peter also. He would have helped Peter in the ministry like a companion and an interpreter. Okay, uh, and we we realize that he served God, and uh, uh, apparently he founded churches in places like Alexandria and Egypt. He even became the the main overseer of these churches or the bishop of these churches. So he was a good minister of God, and uh, he also wrote the Gospel of Mark. Okay, uh, so you know it also shows us that yeah when people are young maybe they can make some mistakes but if they are groomed well uh, if they are taught well uh, they can become very powerful men and women of god who can you know be established and serve just like the other apostles had served so that's a little bit about john mark and in the next class we will we will start studying the second missionary journey of paul which will last for three years. So AD 49 to AD 52, uh, the second missionary journey, where and all Paul went, and what are all the things that they did together. So we will stop right here. Uh, any uh, thoughts, comments about this whole Mark issue and the dispute between uh, Paul and Barnabas? All right, uh, so if there are no comments, let's pray and close. And uh, once again, let me request somebody from the online batch to uh, please pray and close for today. Someone else, Sister Chaya prayed in the morning, but let another person could pray to close. Uh, I could pray? Yes, please, Nina. Are, are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Gracious, loving Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this time that we had, Lord, in your presence and uh, for what we learned, Lord, about the journeys. Thank you once again, Lord, for reminding us of the precious work of the Holy Spirit and how important it is for each one of us to be aligned, to be sensitive, and to know, Lord, which direction and what we should be doing, Lord. We pray and ask that... Uh, all that we learned, Lord, will continue to stay with us. We would be able to meditate on what we have been learning, Lord, all along. And uh, be able to uh, use it in our lives uh, to be dependent on you and dependent on the Holy Spirit. That our lives would be something that would be really pleasing in your sight. Committing the rest of the week into uh, your hands. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. God bless. Uh, God bless you all. Continue to read from the uh, book of Acts, especially Second Missionary Journey is quite elaborate. So uh, I request you to read and come, otherwise you won't understand. Okay, so uh, chapter 16, 17, two chapters, you could please read and come for the next class. Right. Thank you.